So we're here to do a helicopter support team operation or a HST operation. Uh, the purpose of this is to practice carrying loads such as the Humvee um, via air. So today we lifted a up armored Humvee uh, using CH-53 helicopter. Um, this gives more training opportunities for the landing support of the 0481 community. So part of the LS Marine job is to teach this specific skill uh, to other disciplines or to other MOSs. Um, same thing as a, a radio operator teaches people how to use the radio and to man the radio. Uh, laying support specialists are supposed to teach other Marines how to do this kind of operation. Uh, we have to spread that kind of knowledge across the board, uh, getting into the 2030 plan for force design. Um, the smaller groups on the islands is going to require more knowledge to be packed into smaller units so we can stay spread out, uh, stay moving, mobile. Um, and a big part of that logistics strategy uh, in the Pacific is going to be through HSTs or, um, or specifically moving type of logistics uh, that's not relying on motor T. TB used to be TSB, so it used to be Transportation Support Battalion but now it's Transportation Battalion. Um, although we've changed uh, experimenting for Force Design 2030, uh, we're, still, we're still moving around some of our smaller assets. So, so my platoon has landing support Marines and uh, HE operators, even though it's a Transportation Battalion. Um, part of that capability is being able to spread out um, uh, the knowledge that those Marines have to other Marines. So uh, if any of my Marines aren't here, we can still do the mission. Uh, for instance, uh, you can give a license to operate a vehicle uh, to any Marine as long as they go through the training. So, uh, or even like this HST, uh, if I have Marines that are off doing training and we're down to a small amount, well, now I can ask Motor T or I can ask, uh, you know, CLR3 embarkers um, or, or any other Marine that's in my unit, I can ask for them to come to the HST because we're capable of teaching these skills um, on the spot. So for instance, we had the motor T uh, operator and then we had our, our HE mechanic who are not supposed to be doing this stuff, um, excuse me, who are not trained to do this stuff. We had them come out to train the day so they're familiar with the concept. So should this come up again and we're shorthand or we're moving around under the EABO mindset, um, each Marine in the unit has more than just what their MOS is. So that can come into a bigger picture um, or more information. I don't know how much cross-training has been emphasized in the past, but I will say that history has taught us that we need to do cross-training. Um, for example, Vietnam War, uh, if, if the radio operator goes out, there's still a radio and we still have to have communication to carry on with the mission. So it's on that leadership to make sure that the cross-training is happening or that the, the radio operator is teaching the other Marines how to handle it, because if that Marine goes down, the mission still carries on. So doing stuff like this, I think, is going to open up a lot of capability uh, to the commanders, um, and it's o overall going to actually decrease the amount of, um, the amount of manpower stress that's required.